நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் ப்ராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த டமிழ் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அவர் ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி ப்ளீஸ் செக் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் பாக்ஸ் த லிங்க் ஆஃப் த டமிழ் வீடியோ திஸ் இஸ் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் தீபா அண்ட் ஐம் ப்ரெசென்டிங் யூ த இங்கிலீஷ் வேர்ஷன் ஆஃப் த டமிழ் வீடியோ In my last video I explained about the subathwa of the 8th house with a natal chart of of a V VIP. In this video I'm going to explain about Mars before explaining the effects of Mars in 12 different houses in my forthcoming videos. In this video I'm going to explain the basic concepts about the planet Mars. I have explained a lot about Mars in my videos. Many times Saturn and Mars are not perceived by the astrologers in their right sense. Saturn and Mars are two natural malefics and it is very much necessary to understand the planets based on Kal, Desh and Patra. In ancient times the valor of a person was signified by Mars since waging war against the neighboring kingdoms was part of the duty of monarchy If we go back to 100 or 300 years during the rule of the royal kings only those who were strong had the opportunity to live a good life A person was considered to be valorous who was able to defend his enemies with a sword and spear. It was an era where there was no international law system or there was no state level law system or a uniform law system which was common for all the people. So those men who were physically fit and strong were leading a group of soldiers who could incite a riot who could be part of a troop invading war against the neighboring kingdoms who loved winning the wars had very strong mars in their natal chart when a natal has mars with direct strength he was considered to be a great soldier I am a very practical astrologer who insists that one has to understand the karaka of the planet which varies from time to time. I had written a lot of details about the significance of the planets in Ungal Jadagam Yoga Jadagama maybe uh, 10 years before. Every planet's significance or karaka should be understood in relation to the changing environment of the world. In the current modern world, a person who takes a weapon in his hand during a fight will not be definitely encouraged by the people or seen as a valorous person. A lot of respect is given to those who who have a lot of intelligence not courage especially to defend somebody with a weapon our law system has evolved a lot and in the current law system every individual is like a king in our democratic system every person is a king in the democratic system These changes in the society push us to perceive the significance of the planet in different dimensions. Even our great maharishis and sages who shared their knowledge about astrology insisted on understanding the karaka of the planets based on kalam desam shruti yukti vardhamanam that is kal desh patra. therefore in this modern world when mars gains direct strength that is when it has got sthana bala by residing in its own house or exaltation it is not considered to be good 
based on the concept of subhatva you have to understand this further and make predictions when mars has not gained direct strength that is when it does not reside in its own house such as aries or scorpio and when it does not gets exalted in capricorn and when mars resides in the house of natural benefics such as that of venus or jupiter or waxing moon or lone mercury or when mars is in conjunction with natural benefics mars can deliver benefits to the native so when you are making predictions you have to understand the effects of mars based on its subhatva pabhatva and its strength in the natal chart when mars is in conjunction with natural benefics such as jupiter or venus or waxing moon or lone mercury it will subdue the anger impulsive nature of the mars i have already explained the unique significance of mars in my own style such as subhatva pabhatva and sukshma strength when mars gets exalted or when it resides in its own house which is the quadrant house to the ascendant it is called ruchaka yoga there are five types of yogas called panja mahapurusha yoga in our last two series of videos in english i have explained the effects of the luminous planets sun and moon in different houses for 12 different ascendants the panja mahapurusha yoga does not apply to the luminous planets sun and moon the panja mahapurusha yoga applies to five planets such as jupiter saturn mars venus and mercury when these panjabhuta tatva planets reside in quadrant house to the ascendant house with either own house status or exalted status they will attain panja mahapurusha yoga for example if mars resides in the quadrant house to the ascendant house where it gets exalted or when it resides in its own house it attains ruchaka yoga when saturn resides in the quadrant house with own house or exaltation status it attains sasa yoga when mercury resides in the quadrant house to the ascendant house and when it has its own house status or exaltation status it attains bhadra yoga when jupiter resides in quadrant house with own house status or exaltation status it attains hamsa yoga and when venus resides in quadrant house with own house status or exaltation status then it is malavya yoga these are the five types of panja mahapurusha yoga the point to note here is when a native has ruchaka yoga in his or her natal chart it is not considered to be good this particular strength of mars will make a person to be impulsive and obstinate if only mars has got some subhatva when it attains ruchaka yoga it will deliver benefits to the native mars at least should be in conjunction with the moon i have reiterated a point many times in my videos and since this video is all about mars i would like to mention it again i had repeated this in my old articles and in the magazines and in my videos by the grace of almighty i have been living a life in such a way that i consider vedic astrology as my prana and after doing 40 years of research i have understood certain intricacies of astrology Mars should definitely have an aspect or in conjunction with a waxing moon or full moon Mars should have aspect or should be in conjunction with waxing moon 
and Saturn should have aspect or be in conjunction with Jupiter. I have mentioned the reasons for all these logical concepts in my writings whereas I am not sure whether I have mentioned in my videos about the reasons. Mars should be in connection with waxing moon and Saturn should be in connection with Jupiter in order to function or in order to deliver benefits. In space, the size of the planets and the space between the planets play a very important role. There is not much difference between the nature of Mars and Earth. Mars is at a minimum distance of 33.9 million miles from Earth. Moon is a planet that is very small in size when compared to Earth and Moon is very close to us. Earth is double the size of Mars. Mars has a radius of 3389 kilometers approximately and Earth has a radius of 6,371 kilometers. Whereas Jupiter is approximately 10 times bigger than the size of our Earth. It has a radius of 69,900 kilometers approximately. Saturn and Jupiter are very big planets. Saturn is one and a half billion kilometers approximately away from the Earth at the maximum and so it should be aspected by Jupiter which is nearer to it. It is considered to be auspicious when Saturn is aspected by Jupiter or in conjunction with Jupiter since they both are bigger planets and they are close to each other. Jupiter can make Saturn Subhatva more than a waxing moon because the waxing moon is very smaller in size and distance wise it is very far. These are the astronomical facts that everybody agrees and accepts. When Saturn and Jupiter are in conjunction then such native get a lot of benefits. And Mars is slightly bigger than the moon and these two planets are closer in space so the conjunction and aspect of the moon has a great impact on Mars. When the waxing moon is in conjunction with Mars or when it aspect Mars, the malefic nature of Mars is lost and the beneficial nature of Mars increases. Consequently, Mars delivers added benefits. These are the facts I have realized by researching many natal charts and eventually I found that Mars delivers added benefits when it is in conjunction with Moon or gets aspected by Moon rather than when it is in conjunction with Jupiter. This is the simple point you have to understand. Let me say all the points briefly now. In the natal chart of a fortunate person, Mars will be aspected by waxing moon or Purnima or it will be in conjunction with waxing moon or Purnima. Check these planetary conjunctions in the natal chart and you can realize the point that I mentioned and explained above. Well, now let me come to another point. When Mars resides in its own house or gets exalted in the quadrant to the ascendant house, it attains Ruchaka Yoga. Please remember that there is no connection when the planet resides in the quadrant house to the moon in terms of Ruchaka Yoga. The Panjamaha Purusha Yoga does not apply for the quadrant houses to the moon Rashi. You should check only the quadrant house to the ascendant house. These are significant yogas that applies based on the ascendant. 
Some people state even when the Panjabhuta Tattva planets reside in the quadrant to the moon with their own house or exaltation status, they attain Panjamahapursha Yoga. This is totally wrong. Please don't make any compromise in the concepts of astrology. When Mars gets exalted or resides in its own house, which is the quadrant house to the ascendant, it attains Ruchaka Yoga. Ruchaka Yoga is not considered to be good at all. The native in whose natal chart you can see Ruchaka Yoga will be an angry person, impulsive, will do the actions without any forethought and suffer later. In case if you find a person who does not behave impulsive or thoughtless, definitely in their natal chart you will find my concepts of Subhatva coming true. That is, in their natal chart, definitely Mars will not be alone in its own house, exalted and definitely there will be a connection of natural benefit like Jupiter, Venus, waxing moon or lone Mercury with Mars. Based on the concept of Subhatva and Pabhatva, you have to understand how Mars will behave and in my upcoming videos, I am going to explain the effects of Mars in 12 houses for 12 ascendants. I have explained a lot about Mars and its houses in my old videos. So I will explain Mars in this video succinctly. Let me explain the points briefly. Mars is a malefic planet. Mars should not get direct strength, that is, it should not gain Sthanabala by residing in its own house or it should not get exalted even though it is ascendant lord in one's natal chart. Maharishi and great sages have already explained how Mars should be in one's natal chart. Mars should not get direct Sthanabala, rather it should gain strength indirectly by residing in the 10th house to the ascendant house or it should be heading towards 10th house to the ascendant house. In other words, Mars should have Digbala, that is directional strength. When Mars resides in the 9th or 10th house or 11th house, it attains Digbala or it is near to Digbala. It is not considered to be auspicious when Mars resides in the 9th house because it is a trine house. You will see how I am applying the exceptions as well when I explain a point to you. If only you apply all the rules layer by layer, you will understand astrology completely. Though Mars resides in the 9th house, it is heading towards the 10th house where it attains directional strength. So when Mars resides in 9th house, it is near to the Digbala. You have to check other possibilities that is whether Mars has got any benefic connection and you have to make predictions based on it. When Mars resides in the 10th house, if it loses Thanabala in particular, even if it gets debilitated, but still remains as Subhatva in the 10th house, it will deliver all the benefits to the native. At the same time, while Mars lost its Thanabala, you have to definitely understand, it will spoil the Jiva Karaka, that is the siblings who were born after this native, that is the younger siblings, whether it is younger brother or younger sister. If a one benefit exists, then there will be one loss. What will happen when Mars gets debilitated in the 10th house, yet attaining Digbala in the 10th house? It says the native is doing very well. However, the siblings of the native does not have a good life. The life of the native will be definitely better than the life of the siblings. You can make very subtle predictions in all the situations. 
Astrology is such a great art. When Mars gets debilitated in one's natal chart, what will happen? When Mars gets debilitated in a natal chart, it will not affect the native. This is the subtlety of the prediction in regard to Karaka and house effect of the planet. You should definitely know where to apply the Karaka and where to apply house effects while predicting. Sometimes all this knowledge will be attained by a person just wink of an eye. It is all by the grace of the Almighty I am permitted to know the subtlety of astrology. When I underwent the major planetary period of Moon and minor planetary period of Mercury, which I experienced around 30 years of age, it was like a cakewalk for me to understand many astrological concepts. I understood lots of subtleties of astrological concepts. I still remember and I have mentioned a particular moment in my life in few of my videos. It was a lazy morning and I was reading an astrology book. I was just sitting on the floor and glancing at an astrology book. I realized a certain energy within myself that made me realize the planet relationships and the subtleties in astrological concepts. I experienced similar moments few more times in my life which made me realize the subtleties of the astrological concepts. Even during the major planetary period of Mars and minor planetary period of Mercury, I acquired certain knowledge this very same way. This is one of the reasons I was waiting for the Dasha of Mars and Antar Dasha of Mercury, hoping to get more knowledge about astrology. During the Dasha of Rahu and Antar Dasha of Mercury, I wrote many astrological books such as Jodidam Innum Devaragasiyam. Well, now let us come back to Mars. When Mars has something to affect in one's natal chart, what will it affect? How will it affect? Let us say Mars has lost its Sanabala and it has got directional strength in a good position. It means the native will be in a good status whereas the Jiva Karaga signified by Mars which is brother or siblings will not be in a good status because Mars is the natural significator of brother. Let me see what happens in the future during major planetary period of Jupiter and minor planetary period of Mercury in my life. I have made certain achievements during major planetary period of Rahu and minor planetary period of Mercury. And the major planetary period of Jupiter and minor planetary period of Mercury or in near future. It is going to happen within 7 to 10 years. Let us see what is the objective of my birth in this world and let me see what is in my store. It is all directed by the Almighty. There is nothing in our hands. We are merely puppets in the hands of God. We are dancing puppets or toys in the hands of Almighty. This is the truth. I am looking forward to Dasha of Jupiter and Antar Dasha of Mercury. And I am keen to know for what purpose Almighty is going to use me as an instrument. Well, though Mars loses its strength, please don't worry about it. The fact is, it is good when the malefic planet loses its Thanabala and however it should indirectly gain strength in order to deliver its house effects. Even when Mars is an ascendant lord, definitely Mars should not reside in the ascendant house. This is what we are going to discuss indeed. When Mars gets debilitated or loses its strength, 
its house effects will be spoiled. The malefic karaka of the planet can be spoiled, right? It is good. In any situation, the house effects of all the 12 houses are very important to a person. Well, in my next video, I'm going to explain the effects of Mars in 12 different houses for the native of Aries Ascendant. This is question time. What is the shortcoming when Mars gets debilitated and gains directional strength in one's natal chart? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. You can find the link of all the English videos in the description box. And thanks for emailing us all your feedback and suggestions. Keep writing to us astro.writetous at gmail.com. Thank you.